If you're recording your own voiceover auditions or jobs, you might be normalizing the audio file. Are you crazy? That's the last thing you want to do. Hello, I'm William Williams from Aliso Creek Voiceover Classes. Actually, I'm not saying don't normalize. What I really mean, literally, is that normalizing is the last step you want to do. There are two audio effects you want to be familiar with, limiting and normalizing. If you want your recordings to really pop, you need to understand these effects and when to use them. Let's say you record a voiceover audition. Of course, you use my famous Goldilocks theory of recording. Not too hot, so it doesn't clip and distort. And not too cold, so it's not down there on the noise floor. Okay, good. But then you need to pump up the volume a bit to get it to its optimum level. The effect to do that is called normalizing. Before we get into that, Let's take a quick look at digital audio. You see, everything in life is measured from the ground up. How tall are you? From the ground up. How tall is that building? From the ground up. But digital audio has limited numbers it can use to represent height. 16-bit audio can either go to about 32,000 numbers high or 32,000 numbers low. So digital audio has an absolute ceiling of 32,768 steps up or down. So to make sure you don't bust through that ceiling, digital audio is measured from the ceiling down. The ceiling is called 0 dB FS. The FS stands for full scale. Full scale means that's all there is and there ain't no more. Kind of like that guy in the Tamiflu commercial. So what exactly does normalizing do? All it does is turn up all your audio evenly so that the loudest part of it just touches the ceiling. If your audio has very even levels, that's fine. But it usually doesn't. There may be some random peaks that are much louder than the average. And that's the problem with normalizing. Let's look at a typical waveform. See how normal it looks? Um, yeah, except for that one peak. So the normalizing algorithm turns everything up until the tip of that peak just touches the ceiling. I've normalized this waveform to minus 3 dB. That's three decibels lower than the zero dB ceiling. And whoops, <laughs> the volume of the waveform is actually lower than the original. So if you only normalize your finished audition, it may have little effect, or actually turn down the volume of your recording. So what's the problem, and how do you fix it? Well, to find out, let's take a stroll in the forest. Oh, I happen to have one right here. Let's pretend all these trees want to grow as tall as possible but they all have to grow evenly. And they have to stop at the top edge of the sky. Like they say, the sky's the limit. In this case, literally. There'd be a lot of room to grow if all the trees were about the same height. But there's that one pesky tree. So up they go. And the growth of all the other trees is restricted by the tall tree hitting the ceiling. Okay, now say you're in the lumber business. One tall tree means less lumber from all the other trees. Or if you're in the audio business, which we are, one tall spike means less loudness from your other audio. So how do you fix this? Well, like this. Ah, now all the trees can grow to the top of the sky like this. And there's much more lumber, right? And in audio, that means much more sound. So where can you get an audio chainsaw? That effect is called a limiter. The effect looks like this. 
The line that gradually slopes up is called the linear part of the effect. Any sound along this part isn't changed at all. But the line that's horizontal is called the nonlinear part. Any sound on that part of the line is limited, and that means it's restricted from getting any louder. And where the line bends is called the threshold. Okay, enough about trees. Let's get back to that waveform with the pesky peak and run the audio through a limiter. We want to set the threshold so it just touches the tops of the average sounds of the waveform. And voila! Notice the entire waveform is much more even. The tall peak is lowered to the average level. And the entire waveform is a little quieter. But now we can apply the normalizing. And we'll normalize up to minus 3 dB. And look how much stronger the average volume is. Here's the original waveform and the limited and normalized waveform. So when do you want to use these effects? I do it on all my auditions. This is an unaffected audition I'm speaking now. And this is a boosted audition I'm speaking now. All things being equal, which do you think is going to win the job? And I do it for jobs when I feel a producer might not be smart enough about all things audio. Of course, if they tell me no processing, I won't do it. And if you're into specifications, ACX, the audiobook production site, likes to have their audio processed to minus 3 dB FS for peaks and minus 22 to minus 18 dB FS RMS which is the average loudness. So those are the Goldilocks numbers for spoken word. Notice those specifications are what I'm achieving with the limiter. Don't overdo the limiting, or you'll get pumping, breathing effects, a louder noise floor, and a generally smashed, unpleasant sound, like this. 6 dB of reduction is usually just fine. So the moral of the story is this. Limit the audio first to tame those random peaks. And then normalize to minus 3 dB. Your auditions will sound stronger, and your listeners will thank you for it. For further information on all things voiceover, go to alisocreek.net. And click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm William Williams. Thanks for watching, and remember, keep talking.